Hi, I'm Monica Conesa, and you're watching Eclectic Arts Media. Well, thank you so much for taking the time today, Monica, and welcome to Seattle. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Now, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like this is going to be your U.S. debut, your role debut, and also the Seattle Opera debut. Yep, it's a it's a triple threat. Okay, so that's, <laughs> that's a lot of debuts. It is a lot of debuts, um, yes. How are you feeling about the rehearsals and the show thus far before you get to opening night next week? I'm very, very excited. I'm super, super grateful to Seattle for for hiring me and for having me and for hosting my, my U.S. debut. And... The rehearsals have just been really fantastic. The house has been super welcoming and everyone has been very super eager and um, super excited. And it's just been a really great environment to be here. Is this a role in Pagliacci that you've always wanted to do? Um, has it been, or has it been something more of like, I'm so happy to do it, but it wasn't something from you know, years back that you've been always looking forward to? Neda in Pagliacci absolutely is a role that I've always wanted to sing, particularly when I was 14 and I fell in love with opera around that age. I would listen to the final act in my bedroom with the door closed, no one can see me. <laughs> and I would act it out and pretend I was singing it. I would have like a little recording on and I would pretend to be Nedda. And sometimes I would do that right before school. Like I would finish getting dressed and then I would have an hour to pretend I was an opera singer. And, um, and this was one of the roles that I would pretend to sing. So I'm really, really excited that I'm finally getting the chance to do it. Wow. Okay. So knowing that, yeah. Um, have you had moments during rehearsal or even when you're practicing on your own where you're flashbacking to the 14-year-old version of you in your bedroom doing exactly what you just described? Yeah, I that, that has happened to me. Um, it's happened to me a lot, particularly here, because when, well, just how I started, when I was a little girl, um, I started singing Phantom of the Opera around the house. And my mother thought I sounded like an opera singer. She didn't know. She didn't really know opera. And she signed me up for the local youth opera chorus. And a lot of the flashbacks for me during this production have come with watching their youth opera and the young singers that are here because I did exactly that back in Sarasota. And... Um, and being back in the States and being in this environment and seeing the youth opera, I'm just getting so many memories of me as a little girl and also me now thinking, oh my gosh, I've, I was like a little rat, <laughs> you know, a little kid. And now I'm, I'm here and I have my, my incredible career, which I'm grateful for. And I'm singing this role that, yes, I was, I was, playing around with it when I was a little girl. And I, when we got to stage in the staging process, when we arrived to the last act and particularly when Kanyo comes on the, on the stage and everything, I did tell everyone, I said, you know, I've, I'm excited right now to stage this because I've been wanting to stage this since, since I was really young. So this is a big moment for me. And everyone was very kind and, and very supportive. Well, that's that's incredible because you're um, that's a perfect example of a dream coming true. Yeah, my life is a dream come true. <laughs> it really is. It's. I don't mean to brag, but it's absolutely happened to me, and I'm I'm really really grateful, and and I'm also shocked, and everything that's happened to me this this past year. I mean, I I. Just to tell you a little bit about what did happen to me is I lived in New York. I studied at Manhattan School of Music. I, I was living in New York hustling, you know, as performers in New York City do. And the pandemic happened and 
I lost the apartment, lost the job, went back home with my parents. And my voice teacher, Mauricio Trejo, called me and he said, he was living in Philly at the time, Philadelphia. And he called me and he said, come up here. We're going to work every day during this pandemic. And when it's over, you're going to be the first one out of the gate. I was like, okay. So I convinced my parents to let me move in the middle of the pandemic. And I went to his house, his family's house. And we were actually rehearsing in the driveway. He had the garage open because we didn't know if I was contaminated or anything, you know. So we had the garage open and I was in the driveway. He was in the garage with a little electric keyboard and he had a fan blowing at my face. <laughs> and we worked every day that whole year, um, sometimes like five, six hours a day. And I was really just helping around the house, taking care of their children in exchange for lessons. And, and then he noticed this competition where Jose Carreras was the head of the jury. He said, this man is one of the most noble men in the art form. And if he's on this competition, it's, a, it's one for you. It's one that you should do. So I did the competition. And through that competition, I received an audition to debut my whole career with Aida in the Arena di Verona. And they gave me one performance. And I sang that performance. And, and then my career has taken off since then. And that was in 2022. And now, now it's 2024. And I'm finally arriving to the US. And I'm so excited. But yes, it, it, my career really is a dream come true and I'm totally and completely grateful and um but you know it, it does have its its work cut out for it and and each of these jobs is so intense really so intense one of the things where in, when you're a young singer and you're in conservatory or you know you're you're young and you see the main singers and you want to be the opera stars you know I don't know that the, the school systems and everybody really can prepare you for how intense it is to be on the road and to be singing. And it's, it's like once you join this world, you're in a club of people that are all the main singers. Like we all have these difficulties that we all share. And if you're not in our shoes, it's hard for, for you to really know what it's, what it's like because it's very vulnerable and, and it's very intense and it's physically demanding and mentally demanding. But it, it's at the same time one of the best blessings, you know. At the same time, I love it and I'm totally addicted and um, I'm happy. I have, um, actually, that is something that happened to me after my debut is I have such an appreciation for pop singers and and any I honestly any any musician that goes out and does one of these tours and does and I'm talking about the tours that are like two shows in a day get on the bus drive to the next place like that's crazy that's actually crazy <laughs> because just after these days of rehearsals and my legs are exhausted my back is exhausted my body's exhausted and i wake up the next morning i'm like how am i gonna do rehearsal again and something happens when i walk into this rehearsal room and all of a sudden i have the energy again and and i'm with my colleagues and i'm focused and i'm making the music and then you know the next day happened <laughs> the next morning and I'm just like, how am I going to do it again? And I just do it again. And then I see like Beyonce or, you know, even Taylor Swift. I'm more of a Beyonce person than a Taylor Swift person. But, but these tours that are so massive and they have so many like months of rehearsal and the dancing and the preparation and Oh my gosh, that's just incredible. Everything that you do on stage and how you take care of yourself 
that affects a whole group more than more than just yourself and obviously the audience that's paying and that's excited but also this group of colleagues that you're that you're working with that see you every day and you also owe them the respect of really showing up prepared and and making sure that you're giving if they're here giving even even the little children and the choir members and the violinist that's down there in the orchestra pit, he's playing with all of his technique and his might and Meister's conducting, really trying to make something incredible. And you have to show up bringing that, no matter how you feel, because everybody else did. And God knows the composer did when he wrote and sweat over these characters. So with that seriousness and respect to the music, to the history, to the tradition, and to my colleagues, that's how I approach every rehearsal and every performance with that much. Also with a huge respect for all the amazing singers that have sung this role before me. And these singers that these roles were written for, I mean, these were incredible artists that worked and collaborated with these composers. And they're, what's left of them is in that book, in that score. And it's interesting because the score can be like a little time capsule, like a time machine, where if I can sing exactly what's on in the score, I get to know Leon Cavallo or Mozart. Not only do I get to know him, but I get to know who was singing his music. And all of a sudden I'm not here, I'm in the 1700s or the 1800s. And I'm there and I'm having a conversation with the composer, but I'm not there, I'm in 2024, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But. I don't even remember what I was saying. I just got so excited. <laughs> um, but it it is so important to, when you approach rehearsals, uh, um, the operas, the performances themselves, to, to have that respect for your colleagues, the audience, but also for everybody that has sung it before you and everybody that it was written for. It's It's also like one of the main things that motivates me in all of the work that I do as a as a singer and as a performer I see opera way more as a sport than you know just music or just an art form I guess in that way I don't know if figure skating is the right word but but definitely like a gymnastics or something like that where they're there's so much athleticism in the technique of the body itself, in the movements, especially in this production of Pagliacci. She's very, very active. And if all of you come to the show, which I hope you do, you're going to see me running around all over the place. <laughs> but, um, but like a sport, also in sports and in athletics, there is this culture of talking about the people of the past you know, the, the um, basketball players, the definitely the Olympics and the gymnasts and Nadia Kumanichi and all these people that are just legends and the records that they set. And then who's going to break the next record? Who's going to move it? Who's going to, you know, who does the torch get passed to? And that's something that that definitely, I don't know, of course it exists in the opera world, but I think that it exists only to where recordings started. Mm. And kind of before that, it's lost, specifically like CDs, electronic recording versus LP. And I think that something in our time period and in our generation that needs to be expanded is we need to really think past recordings and and really go further back in history and learn 
more about really the originals and who the operas were written for and what were their stories. It's something that I'm really, really passionate about. And I think that they should be teaching it in, in the school systems and in the conservatories and they should be, it should be a part of the degree. And fortunately it's not right now. They don't have like a, like a, if you're going to have a, a vocal degree in, in opera or master's degree in music, you don't really have a class on the history of the performers that performed the roles or violinists or pianists. And, and I really think why not? Because in athletics, you know, you watch the basketball players, you watch the coaches too, and you learn about the coach that had this team or that team. Um, but of course you, you learn about the players and who the players were and, and how they train and the records they set. So it really should be the same in opera and in, I don't know, the same in everything that we do. I guess we should, we should always look to the past and pull from the past to go into the future. And that's something that's great about opera because it has an immediate connection to the past. With, uh, with your role of Netta and Pagliacci, um, what have you found since you just told me that this has been really like a, you know, <laughs> almost a lifelong dream to be in this role, be in this production? Have you found any certain parts that have been more challenging that you, than you thought they were going to be? Um, I, I really love this role. I, there have been, I don't think, challenging as much as surprising and things things about this role that are very very particular and specific and obviously this role is has a role within the role and it's Nedda and she plays Colombina so what's been surprising is developing how involved and how specific the work has been for developing the physicality for Nedda and kind of finding out who she is and then also who Colombina is. And what was surprising about that is I found my idea for Colombina in this particular production. I'm not entirely sure if this will stay with my Colombina for my whole life. Um, but in this particular production, my idea for Colombina was found first. And then Nedda became a reaction to, to the Colombina. Um, so that has been very interesting. And also, it always starts vocally. My voice teacher is really, really a big believer in, in helping me find the vocal identity or the vocal temperament of a role. Um, so what does this girl sound like, really? And what does she sound like in my voice? So what's her fingerprint? Um, so when I was looking for, when we kind of decided and we're starting to create the sound for Nedda, when we arrived to the Colombino part and I put a very specific decision for Colombina sound, Again, it just only informed Nedda again, because then I could go, once I had her more defined, I could really define her even further. Um, and then, of course, those ideas vocally, once I got in here into the staging, they just completely developed in a very surprising way. So I am very much enjoying that particular concept that's in this role that is not in many, I don't think too many other roles in opera, um, but that really is a, a trademark of singing her. And, and that's something, of course, I didn't think about when I was 14 <laughs> in my bedroom. <laughs> How do the, have you found like working for the Seattle Opera in a US-based opera house? Are there any differences or things that are different compared to like European houses? They speak English. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I am. I am so, so, so happy to be here in this opera house. They, they have been so kind from the, from their kickoff meeting, which is what they called the first meeting, where 
you know, we, we all got together, everybody in the administration and, and everybody in the cast and the director gave a whole overview of the concept and uh, Maestro Carlo Montanaro spoke and everybody was so warm and so welcoming and so kind and it was such a great environment. And it was, it was really, really positive. It's, it's only been more positive um, since I've been here. And I think, I don't know if this is U.S. or if this is Europe, um, because this is my first opera house in the U.S. So I'm going to have to sing in a couple more before I officially tell you what I think about singing in the U.S. versus singing in Europe. But I can say that they have been very collaborative in helping me build Nedda. The costume department, Dan the director, Maestro, I mean all of them have been fantastic, have been open to my ideas as an artist. I even added some things to the costume which the other that are my ideas and they got approved which was great. Um, but in, in other opera houses that, that I've worked in, you know, things have been a little bit more traditional. So obviously those, those suggestions are not kind of out of the question. But here there really was this, this collaboration and I've really felt on this production that I have been involved in building Nedda and building the character and building the scenes. Um, myself, not just taking, um, like direction from other people, but, um, but the verdict's out if that's a U.S. thing or if that's, that's just a Seattle opera thing. So I'll let you know, we can do this interview again in a couple of years and I'll let you know. Okay, well, I'll be sure to bring that question up again. Yeah. Now that you've toured around a few other U.S. opera houses, um, remember that question in 2024? Yeah. <laughs> what really is the difference between singing in the U.S. and singing in Europe? Um, that, the last question I wanted to ask was about, um, you definitely have such a nice energy to you, and you're very intelligent. Um, and I could easily see you like hosting your own uh, podcast platform. And I, I watched a couple of, you had two videos up on your YouTube channel. Yeah. And you definitely have things, stories on your Instagram. Um, but particularly with the YouTube one, you had like a good 25, 30 minute piece of you like landing in a city and your whole process of what yes. you go through. Do you I'm so excited that you're mentioning this. You can say your question now. <laughs> well, I'm, are you planning on adding more content to it? Do you have, because you're so like almost like a natural at it that I think you would be doing the world of service if you expanded it. Yay! I'm so excited because because this this I just released that video, <laughs> so I'm really really excited. I do have many many ideas, and that YouTube channel is like my little my little baby right now. Um, but I do have many ideas. I I'm I'm very very passionate about kind of breaking this this fourth wall this there's the fourth wall of the stage right and of theater but there's also a fourth wall to to a performer's life and there's stuff that you don't see so really the idea of my youtube channel is not i want you to come with me and i want you to come see the rehearsals and i want you to come on the train with me and and get an inside look and and basically, it's just what I wanted to watch when I was in New York, struggling. Like, it's, it's someone that I would want to hear about. And so maybe, maybe really what the YouTube channel is, just me talking to my younger self, being like, this is what you need to know, and this is what it's going to look like. And I, I released a video giving, you know, passport advice, and, and I have content planned for other things that I think singers should know that doesn't lean towards technique or vocal advice, but just everything else. Um, so I am excited that I have my YouTube channel. I'm going to be releasing videos like that. I also have, you know, I'm excited to be talking about some historical figures that I think people should know about for the history of opera. 
and also just just taking everybody along for the ride. Everyone can just come with me. <laughs> I'm not so alone. No. <laughs> well, I, I can't wait to see um, and see more content and be a part of that that journey that you're, um, yeah, letting everybody kind of get a, a behind the scenes look into, like you just said, things that um, you kind of wish maybe you had known, um, these little tidbits that you're not going to know until you're actually doing it, because uh, I found it fascinating. Um, yeah, thank I, I, you. Yeah, I love that kind of thing, so I can't wait. I've already subscribed to, <laughs> to Yay! your channel. Yay! <laughs> I have a subscriber, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm meeting you in person. Yeah, they're... you're the first subscriber I've met in person. Oh wow! Yay! So, so we have US debut, we have Roll debut, we have Seattle Opera debut, and you now... YouTube <laughs> subscriber debut. First, yeah. Backstage with Monica Conesa. There we go, <laughs> Monica. Thank you so much for taking the time. It's just an absolute pleasure talking with you, and I can't wait to see you August third next Saturday when you open up uh, the 61st season of the Seattle Opera oh, thank um, you. with your role in Pagliacci. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. Can't wait to see you there. Hola, soy Monica Conesa y estás mirando Eclectic Arts Media.